Welcome back to the course on every single processing for music applications. This week we're talking about the harmonic model. And in these uh, demonstration classes, we're trying to understand this model by actually using it, by analyzing some sounds and synthesizing them. In this uh, lecture, I want to go a little bit beyond what we did and, uh, and analyze a fragment of a sound and see if we can take it to the limit and see what is its potential and its limitations. So in particular, we will be analyzing a little a few notes of a cello that I played. And uh, the cello is, a, of course, it's a great instrument. It's a very traditional instrument uh, that you can do a lot of things with it. So uh, a good way to, to get a grasp of the types of sounds that the cello does is look at uh, free sound and just search for uh, uh, violoncello. Okay and uh, that will give you a few uh, samples of uh, different types of uh, cello sounds. So in fact, for example, the first one is an kind of an extended technique. Uh, so le in fact, let's listen to that. Okay, that's uh, what is called a seagull effect and uh, it's kind of an interesting sound. Of course, you can uh, also get some more traditional notes uh, playing in what is called tenuto or uh, also with the cello you can play uh, pizzicato notes and uh, this is a pizzicato note but of course uh, you can find uh, many types of sound and, uh, and little fragments the the sound I will be uh, using is a, a small a short cello phrase uh, from a very traditional uh, Catalan song, uh, the, the Song of the Birds. Um, and in fact, it's the one that I use in the, in the teaser of the, of the course. In fact, let's listen to that one. Okay, so let's, uh, let's analyze uh, this sound. Um, and uh, let's open the SMS Tools uh, GUI and uh, we'll first start from the short time Fourier transform. This is a uh, uh, time varying sound, so uh, we need the short time Fourier transform to get a grasp of it. Uh, so let's open the, the sound, the uh, uh, cello phrase uh, right here. Okay, and uh, okay, we have to choose the parameters. Um, and okay, let's instead of a humming window, uh, let's choose the Blackman window. The Blackman window, uh, the, the main lobe is wider than the, the, the humming, but uh, the side lobes are lower, and that may be good for uh, this sound. So let's choose a Blackman window. And then, okay, window size, we don't have much to, uh, to now to uh, um, decide from, but uh, let's just, for example, let's use 1001 samples. Let's just leave the FFT size at uh, 1024 and uh, the FFT size, uh, the hop size has to be uh, at least one fourth of the window size. So let's use 250. Okay, and uh, now we compute that. Uh, this is a longer uh, fragment, so it's going to take uh, a little bit longer. Um, and uh, from it, we will be able to okay, visualize the magnitude spectrum and the phase spectrum. Okay, now what we are interested in is uh, in deciding what parameters uh, are needed in order to be able to distinguish the harmonics of this phrase. So in fact an important thing is to identify what is the lowest fundamental that is being played. The lowest fundamental will be the one that will determine the minimum distance between two harmonics. So let's zoom into uh, the very bottom of uh, this uh, spectrogram. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, the first and a little bit of the second uh, harmonic, so it's a very clear harmonic sound. And uh, we can see that the, it starts a little bit low, goes up, and then it goes down. So clearly the lowest uh, frequencies are going to be the first and the last. But here we see that the resolution is not so good. In fact, we see these boxes, kind of this uh, quantization in the horizontal axis. No, in the vertical axis is pretty good. We have 250 uh, samples, so there is quite a lot of frames, but there is not that many uh, in terms of uh, frequency samples in order to be able to visualize uh, and then further on analyze the peak of this uh, harmonic. So let's increase 
uh, maybe the, the window size cannot be increased because then we would lose the time resolution but let's increase the, the FFT size so we get a smoother spectrum, more samples for example let's say 4096 so quite a bit more um, of the FFT size so this will give us quite a bit of zero padding and therefore uh, will give us many more uh, samples in the frequency vein even though the actual data point will be uh, the same so um, well again this uh, takes a little bit to compute okay so this is the the spectrum uh, clearly uh, there is a more fine resolution than before Le let's do the same thing let's zoom into the very uh, uh, bottom of the spectrum okay and okay and yeah now we definitely have many more frequency samples and though of course it looks uh, similar but we now would be able to see the center of the window much better so if we look like in the last node but with the center of these well looking at the at the uh, the y-axis it's around 348 Hertz okay so that would be the lowest note and the highest note is around 456 uh, Hertz okay so this is good information for deciding uh, now the the window size that we should use uh, so in fact uh, okay let's uh, do the sinusoidal model and let's uh, look at this information so in order to decide what is the period length so we have to take uh, 44,100 and divide it by uh, that uh, frequency which was around 300 let's say and uh, 40 hertz okay to make it a little bit lower okay so this is 129 samples and then if we use for example the the blackman window well, we will need six times that. So if we take six times uh, these, okay, that would give us uh, 778 samples. Okay, so let's put in the window size 778 samples. That should be enough to discriminate the, the harmonics. And the FFT size, uh, I think it was good to have this uh, big FFT size. So 4096 was a good choice because that gave us a good... Uh, uh, resolution at least uh, visually and now of course in the sinusoidal model we can choose the threshold the minimum duration of the sinusoids and uh, how many sinusoids we want to track the maximum frequency deviation here we should uh, I think have it a little bit bigger because there is quite a bit of variation okay and now let's uh, of course choose the the cello sound the cello phrase and we will compute it Okay, so this is uh, the sinusoidal analysis. And yeah, we see the, the harmonics uh, following kind of the melody. We also see short sinusoids. In fact, if we zoom in into one region of that, for example, uh, let's uh, show this region here. Okay, we see, uh, well, definitely the harmonics, but also we see some lines in between them and we see some uh, uh, trajectories uh, stopping and continuing. Uh. So anyway, so this is sinusoidal model. If we listen to the result, well, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, maybe uh, we are losing a little bit of, of the attacks uh, of the notes, but it's pretty good. So let's go directly now to the harmonic model and uh, let's uh, Okay, use the same the cello phrase uh, and let's use the Blackman window let's use the same uh, 700 oh, we should have a, a not size window so let's use 779 uh, in terms of the FFT size again okay let, I think it was a good choice 4096 uh, a lot of zero padding the magnitude threshold minus 90 that's okay the duration of the tracks okay so this will um, will require to be 0.1 seconds i think we can even make it bigger so let's say 0.2 seconds and the number a uh, maximum number of harmonics uh, there is clearly no need for 100 in fact a way to check how many harmonics are needed is the 
the if we divide 44,100 by the frequency uh, the lowest uh, frequency uh, okay no we have to divide half of the sampling rate so 22,050 divided by the uh, lowest uh, frequency so 64 that would be the maximum number of harmonics that we would have if we really would have all the harmonics in the lowest note so no need for a hundred uh, let's say uh, let's uh, let's put uh, 60 would be plenty and here now is where we have to choose a, a, a range that includes all this melody so we said that the the lowest uh, frequency was around 340 let's make it safer so let's make 300 and the highest was uh, above uh, 450 or something so let's make it uh, quite a bit higher just in case let's make it 500 okay and this is uh, an error threshold uh, that will be quite relevant uh, now for identifying the fundamental frequency but let's just leave it as it is now and see if we have to change it later okay so now we will compute it so again this will take uh, a little bit of time okay so this is the the harmonics it has obtained and that looks pretty good uh, it found uh, quite a bit of harmonics of course in the transitions that were the the problems or at least the the little deviations occur so if we just zoom into uh, just one transition let's say uh, so this is where the harmonics of course get lost and uh, then they are picked up again. If we listen, well, let's uh, plot it ag again to the, to the original, and if we listen to the synthesize, okay, that's pretty good. Now, if in, in terms of the this uh, error uh, threshold of the algorithm, uh, if we make it more restrictive, so that means that unless is below a certain error it will not be accepted uh, we might see then that uh, some of these areas uh, it does not find the fundamental so instead of seven let's put for example two okay and let's see what it finds okay so now we see uh, the result and we clearly see that in the transitions there are gaps no? And this is because in the transitions the fundamental is not very clear. We are in a kind of attack, noisy attack. So it has lost a little bit of the transitions. And if we listen to that, in fact, we're going to listen to these uh, gaps. Okay, so there are gaps in the transitions because that's where the areas that it didn't find the fundamental and therefore it didn't find any harmonics and that's uh, basically all I wanted to say so let's go back to uh, the, the slides and uh, well we have uh, used uh, the SMS tools uh, GUI uh, in order to analyze uh, this uh, cello uh, fragment and we have used the short time Fourier transform the sinusoidal model and uh, now the harmonic model uh, to, to see uh, this, uh, this phrase and to analyze the harmonics and we can see that uh, by tweaking the parameters we can get quite a bit of uh, difference in the way that these harmonics are analyzed. So uh, that's all and uh, this is all for the demo classes of uh, this harmonic uh, model week. So hopefully this has given you a, a view of uh, how the harmonic model can actually be used in practice. And uh, still is not ideal and there is some parts of the sound, especially like uh, in this sound that we just heard in the, in the attacks, that we lose a little bit of the sound uh, that is present there. So the next week we will extend the idea of uh, the sinusoidal and harmonic model to include that aspect, to include what we call the residual or the stochastic component. Hopefully that will allow us to uh, generalize our models and to be able to handle many more types of sound. So uh, I will see you uh, in next class. Thank you very much.